I'm Barbara Schwartz, Chief Magic Maker at Accuate Loss the Bead Diet. And I'm here today to show you how to make the Accuate 15 minute cheese. It's really simple. There's only two ingredients plus any seasonings you want to add. So we've got 10 ounces of whole milk, one ounce of real lemon lemon juice as a reminder so here's the real lemon um, we are not allowed milk on a fruit and vegetable day and no fruit on a milk and yogurt day so we're going to use real lemon which is zero calorie lemon juice it's all natural but made from concentrate so that you can use any day any time so that's what we're going to use to separate essentially the curds and whey then we're gonna add any seasonings we want to spice it up a little when we're done. The only other thing that you need is a piece of cheesecloth. And we're gonna use that ultimately to separate the curds and whey. So we're gonna start with heating our milk. We're gonna heat it to 180 degrees. If you don't have a food thermometer, what you're gonna do is you're just gonna watch for the time when the milk gets that little film over the top. Actually, did I turn that? There we go. That gets a film over the top. So I've just got the milk on high at the moment, and we're just gonna let it heat up. And so that's just gonna take, keep an eye on it for 10 ounces of milk. That's gonna happen relatively quickly. Um, I do have a food thermometer, um, really inexpensive. I got it on Amazon. And what you do is you can just keep an eye on it by putting it into the milk. So at the moment, it's cold right out of the fridge. By the way, I'm lactose intolerant, so I am using organic lactose-free whole milk, so this way I've actually got lactose-free cheese. So that's great for me. So we're just gonna give that a minute to heat up. Again, it might take two to three minutes, but you will be surprised once it heats up. It's gonna happen relatively quickly. So just as a reminder, there are many different ways that you can enjoy your dairy or dairy alternatives on a milk day. This is one of our recipes that if you're using a dairy alternative, you're not gonna be able to make cheese. Um, but some people who don't use dairy or don't use milk sometimes do use cheese. And again, remember you have the option like I'm doing of using lactose free. Um, there are many different ways to enjoy it. Essentially what we're making is farmer cheese and I should say thank you to Isabella Friedman Center who actually introduced me to this recipe and did give me permission to share it with all of you. What we're gonna be doing to spice it up, and you can use lots of things, is I'm gonna be using later some Himalayan pink salt to give a little bit of that salty taste along with I use Bragg's Organic Sprinkle. This has, what does it say, 24 herbs and spices. So it's gonna give a little different flavor, but there are many different cheeses. People like garlic, they like onion. Remember, anything that comes in sprinkle form, all seasonings are allowed any day, any time, so you can enjoy that. So let's take a look and see how our milk is doing. So I'm just gonna put the thermometer in to take a look. And we're already at 111 it's going up 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 so again we want to get to 180 but it's still the thermometers creeping up so we're at about 123 so it's going to be probably another minute or two um, again as a reminder we're not allowed to use vinegar while on the program vinegar is often used as a separator of curds and whey so that's why we're using something else that's acidic a little bit on the lower level which is our real lemon, lemon juice. Um, the way to separate curds and whey I found out is to put some kind of acid. Vinegar is a very common one for cheese, but again, we do not use vinegar well on the program. It's a little too acidic and it neutralizes the chemistry of the program. Remember, we are based in chemistry, not calories, so it's really important to keep that chemistry in mind. Um, I can feel the milk heating up so I'm going to check it again and let's see where we are 
So we're already over 140, so we're approaching that 180. And again, if you don't have a thermometer, if you've ever heated milk, at a certain level it starts to get like a thin film on the top. Just when it hits that, you're going to turn off the heat. And um, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be letting it go. It's going to have to sit for about three minutes. We say three to five, but I'm going to go on the short end. We'll go for the three minutes. So we're already at 160. So we're almost at that 180. It's getting there. And so again, lots of other fun dairy things that you can do. Check the website. Overall, we have over 500 recipes our clients can make, and we're adding more every day. Um, there's lots of simple ways. I'll demonstrate maybe another day is how to make your own ice cream. Um, you can make whipped cream. One of my favorite things is you make some hot chocolate and you can top it with your homemade whipped cream. So that's kind of fun. Um, I made a flan. I think it's kind of a custardy thing. So we're getting a really interesting thing. So we're already at a over 170, so we're getting close. And if you can see, there's just that little film that's forming. And as that film is forming, we're at 177, 178. We're just about there, 179, and we're at 180. So at 180, we're just going to turn off the heat. And we're going to let it sit. I'm going to turn the timer on for three minutes. So I'm just using the timer so that we can count it down. So this is how simple it is. We're essentially going to be heating up the milk, which we just did. We're going to be adding the lemon juice. And again, then it's going to have to sit and then we're going to drain it. So it's a very, very simple process. It's a little patience because we got to watch the milk heat up. Now we got to let it sit. We're going to add the lemon juice. We're going to let it sit and we're gonna drain it. It is that simple. Just so you know, I am not that talented in the kitchen. So my attitude is if I can make cheese, anybody can make cheese. And it's really nice to have something different, something with a little substance and that you can mix up the flavors. I'm a simple person, so I tend to use the same seasoning each time. Um, it is actually the way also to make Indian paneer. Um, I haven't done it yet because I love this cheese warm when you've just made it, so it rarely makes it to my fridge, but you can refrigerate it. And apparently if you keep it in the cheesecloth and place a plate on it with some weight overnight, it, or even within an hour or two, it's gonna compress to actually be a sliceable Indian paneer. So that's a nice option as well. Um, so let's talk about Qigong breathing because we have a few minutes. So people are always asking me how to do the breathing exercise. So why don't I do a little quick fill in of that. Um, we're gonna use the Qigong for three reasons. It oxy oxygenates the brain and body, better memory, better retention. Um, it's gonna expand lung capacity and it's a systemic stress reliever. You can use it as a way to push away cravings and urges. So the way it works, with your mouth closed, it's gonna take a deep breath through your nose, allowing your lungs to fill with air. When your lungs feel full without ever holding your breath, you're going to begin to exhale as slowly as you can out through your mouth, in through the nose, as slowly as you can out through your mouth focusing your attention solely on the breathing pushing everything else out of your mind it's meditative in out focusing on the breathing now I normally do the sitting but being we're here in the kitchen I'm gonna do it standing so we're doing a belly breath remember our lungs go all the way down to our diaphragm most of us are breathing here <laughs> So we're running around in our crazy lives. So we're gonna remind the body how to breathe all the way down to her diaphragm. Oh, we're gonna take a break and I'm gonna come back to that and let's go check out our milk.
So if you see, it's formed that little layer. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna pour in our lemon juice. And now we're gonna set the timer again for another three minutes. So let's come back to the breathing. I'm gonna demonstrate nice deep breath in, belly breath. When you finished your exhale, normal breathing to a count of five. One, two, three, four, five, and you repeat it again. I don't know if you can tell that my voice has actually just gotten deeper. All of that oxygen just from one breath has brought me back to center. By bringing me back to center, I'm no longer speaking from up here. I'm speaking from my center, which is the proper way to use our breath and our voice. When you do the breathing exercise, you're always gonna do it four times. In through the nose, as slowly as you can, out through your mouth, focusing on the breathing. Regular breaths for a count of five. One, two, three, four, five and then repeat total of four breaths as you're getting used to this breathing exercise we do recommend that you place the back of your hand in front of your mouth when you can feel your own breath you're able to slow it down take your time for a lot of people they have trouble connecting to a belly breath so what we recommend is while you're lying down, maybe in bed in the evening, take a hard-covered book and place it on your belly. Then when you're breathing, your goal is to watch the book rise. If you're breathing from your chest, the book is gonna go down or it's not gonna move. So it also is gonna help you with that meditative aspect because while you're focusing your attention on that book, it's helping you meditate on the breathing. So it kind of kills two birds with one stone, which is a great way to go. So we're down to 24 seconds. Again, it's kind of a three to five minutes. So I'm cutting it on the short end so that we can see what's going on. And, you know, it's going through its separation. You can kind of see it bubbling a little bit. And we're gonna rely on the cheesecloth to help separate it the remainder of the way, especially because we only gave it a few minutes. Take it and we're going to separate the curds and whey. And I don't know if you can see on the video, you can even see a little bit of the residue in the pan. Those are the curds that turn into the cheese. So, what I did is I placed the cheesecloth over a bowl. So, now what I can do is the liquid is going to go into the bowl. And I'm going to be able to lift up what's left is turning into our cheese. And then depending how hard or soft I want it, it's very hot. <laughs> so be careful. It smells yummy. You can smell it already. Yeah, depending on how much you squeeze it out, is how hard or soft your cheese will be. And again, I did kind of heat this and let it sit on the shorter end. You'll get a little more separation the longer you let it sit. So if you go more for the five minutes, you'll get a larger lump of cheese. But if you look in the cheesecloth, you'll see here, I'm gonna bring around, I have another bowl. Yep still draining and again like I said 
If you go more for the five minutes, you're gonna get a larger piece of cheese. So if you come over and just pull it out of the cheesecloth, got a nice little ball of cheese here and again I didn't oops I <laughs> got some on so you can see it's actually cheese that I can hold it's got texture it's got substance it is soft but it's solid and then what you can do is I like to just add a little bit of salt a little bit of sprinkle Let me get myself. I love to turn to a demi tasse spoon. When you use a big spoon, we often take bites that are way too big. So a little demi tasse spoon, you just take a little bit. Mmm. Really delicious Accuate cheese. Making cheese is that simple. It's a great variation. It's giving you something solid to enjoy and uh, have fun with it. I'm Barbara Schwartz, Chief Magic Maker at Accuate Lost the Bead Diet, and that's how to make our Accuate 15-Minute Cheese. Thank you.